Hello everybody, welcome back to Read and Reread. I am Angelia and today, as promised, or maybe threatened, this is the announcement and explanation of my Shorty September 30 Stories in 30 Days reading project. That wasn't short at all. I should have picked something that fit Shorty a little better, but oh well. So this is uh, year two of my goal of reading 30 different short stories in 30 days in September. So as you probably know, September is Shorty September, a time to read short stories, short novels, short nonfiction, just short books and stuff in general. And I am going to read some other short things too that will be in my general September TBR. But this is about my 30 stories in 30 days. So last year I had this idea and I, I pretty much, I think I ended up reading something like 27 stories in 30 days. And I think part of that was a trip that I took that I, where I got off track. And also I got completely sidetracked when I started to read, um, Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. And then I just ended up reading the whole book and I didn't go on to another story and it, it upended the schedule. But also I didn't have it planned out last year. It's kind of a seat of my pants idea. And so I just picked stories every day randomly. And then I talked about them, what I ended up uh, having read during Friday reads. But this year I decided to pre-plan co and commit to 30 particular stories and let you know what they are in advance in case you would like to read along with any of them, all of them, one of them, some of them, none of them. You just want to listen to what I have to say about them, whatever you want to do. But I, uh, I'll tell you in advance what they are and kind of stick to the schedule, I hope. And these are for the most part completely different than last year. I have a few repeat authors, but a different story. And it's mostly different authors and different stories. And there's only one that is the same author and the same story because it's my all-time favorite short story. And so it is going to be the grand marshal of this parade. And you will find out about that in just a second. Now, let's see. My other disclaimers here are I did not spend any money to do this. So I skipped over some authors that I'm interested in where I don't have this book and maybe it's a new collection of stories and the library doesn't have it yet. So I'm gonna save those for later. I used what I have in my own library or at the library to form this list. I wanted diversity and variety in uh, the types of uh, time periods, genres, authors, etc. But these are mostly uh, probably UK and American authors. I, there's not a lot of international authors because that was a project that would have required a little more research and time on my part that I didn't have to get this out in some kind of timely manner. But that is a great idea. Uh, as I pr put together the list that occurred to me and I thought, well, next year I need to back it up and start making my list earlier so I can get a hold of some more international uh, offerings to put in the mix. But Good idea for next year. So anyway, uh, this is it. And I try to mix it up. I didn't want to have uh, something chronological like the older ones and then the newer ones. Each week is completely mixed up. And also I tried to mix up if there was a super long one to not put two super long ones in the same few days period. Um, all right. And so also uh, what I've decided to do for format is I will make a separate video each week or every five stories or something like that that comes out to about once a week uh, to discuss the stories so that there won't be any uh, one video way too long. And you can also chime in if you want to discuss the stories uh, in the comment section of that video. Um, or also I'm going to do a very short uh, daily, just a little announcement that reminds everybody of what that day's story is. And if there is a link uh, to an online copy of that story, I will include it in that daily announcement. Mine are all print copies because that's what I prefer to read, but a lot of these are available online. So I will include that if I find it and that'll be like a little daily reminder, fun fact kind of thing. So, okay, I think that's all of the major explanation of this project. And I'm gonna keep this really short. I'm just gonna go through what the 30 um, stories are without a lot of discussion of those different authors or time periods or anything like that, because we can get into those 
later. I just want to tell you what they are and I will also include them all in the show notes. All right, so with all of that spelled out, let us talk about the 30 stories, those 30 days, half September. All right, so first of all, the grand marshal of this parade, flagship story of the whole shebang is Flannery O'Connor, and the story is Good Country People. This is my all-time favorite short story. And that story, I have this um, collected works, and it is in the collection A Good Man is Hard to Find, which is another fabulous, impeccable short story. So that is number one, and it is always going to be number one. And the next one is in this uh, very large, old uh, Harper American Literature Anthology that has served me well for decades, and it is Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville. And thanks to Tight Lutrec for reminding me to include this story because uh, I loved it back in the day and I haven't read it in a long time. The last time I read this story, oh no, no, I can't get into that. We're going to keep moving, but I'll tell you that story later uh, about the last time I read this story. This seems kind of far away. Hi. So we're going to move up to contemporary story, and I'm going to read the first story in this collection by D. Shaw Filia, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. I have heard this um, rhapsodized about so many times on Greg's channel, Supposedly Fun. It's one of his favorite books. I think he calls this um, his beloved. And um, anyway, I have always wanted to read it. I finally got a copy a few months ago and I've been saving it. I have not read anything from it. And this, the first story is called Eula. So we're gonna begin at the beginning with that story. And I'm excited. Number four is uh, Tommy Orange with a story called The Team. I read Tommy Orange's novel There There a few years ago and I don't think he has released another novel uh, published another novel since then, but I will double check on that. But he has a story in this anthology that I found at the library called The Decameron Project, which is a collection of stories from a series that the New York Times Magazine had online in 2020. And I will explain more about what this book and that project was about when we begin. But I found several authors in here that I'm excited to read a short story by that was a poorly constructed sentence. But anyway, The Team by Tommy Orange is uh, number four. You asked for it, you got it. 10th of December uh, by George Saunders. Okay, Constance, here it is. I'm, re I'm including this. And this is um, the story I'm going to read. It's called The Sim... I have notes right here. It's called The Simplica Girl Diaries. I might read one or two others because I have... Um, I have said on a many an occasion that I was going to get this book out of the library and try some of these stories. The next one is, is another one from this collection and it is a story called Tales from the LA River by Colin Toybean. So I am all, I'm all into him now since I just read Brooklyn and I am going to get another novel by him very soon. But when I saw that he had a short story in this anthology, I was like, yes, that has to be on the list. So that is number six. The next story is called Inventory by Carmen Maria Machado. I have had this anthology for several years and I have still not read any of it. I've mentioned this before in videos where it's about, you know, books you have that you haven't read. I still haven't read anything. So now is the time on September, what did I say? The 7th, I'm going to read the story Inventory. The next one is a longish one. I don't have a print copy of it. I think this is the only one where I'm, I'm going to read an online copy and it is The Machine Stops by E.M. Forster. I did read it earlier this year uh, in the Forster read along when we were reading short stories and it blew me away. I immediately knew I wanted to read it again um, and I will include, I think I found it, I can't remember what website I found it on. It might have been Project Gutenberg, I'm not sure. But I will include it in the notes for sure and I am going to read this again. I want to think about it some more, especially after my recent reread of some other dystopian novels. Now I want to look at this story again. Um, number nine is a repeat author but a different story. It's Alice Munro. You cannot do a 30 day long discussion of short stories and leave out Alice Munro. 
So I'm going to read the title story from Hateship, Friendship, Courtship, Loveship, Marriage. I think I read a story from one of her very early collections last year, and this one is, I think, around 20, 2000, 2002, or something like that. I'll find out. But I'm going to read that title story this year by Alice Monroe. She will probably, if I do this every year, I'll probably put her in every year. Guess what? The next story is from the Decameron Project, and it is by Rivers Solomon. I read one of River Solomon's books earlier this year. Oops, what was it called? Oh no. The Deep? I think it was called The Deep. And the short story here is called Prudent Girls. So we're going to check that out. On September 11th, ooh, that's, that's not a great date, but I do have a book that I'm very excited about, Walk the Blue Fields by Claire Keegan, who is a absolute master of short form writing, and this is the only thing I haven't read by her that's come out so far, is this collection of short stories, Walk the Blue Fields, and I'm going to read the title story on September 11th. And on the 12th, I'm going to lug out this American Norton anthology and read Paul's Case by Willa Cather. I read, last year I read, what did I read? My Antonia. And from then on, I, I wanted to read something else by Willa Cather, but I haven't done it yet. And now it is going to happen. I've heard this is one of her best short stories. So Paul's Case will be on uh, September 12th. September 13th, that's my daughter's birthday. I'm going to read Potluck by Brandon Taylor, another author that I've been wanting to read. I know that he has some novels that people love. He has a, a new one, I think it's called The Late Americans, another one called Real Life. I have not read them, but I know he also writes short stories, and my library had Filthy Animals, this anthology, uh, not anthology, but collection of stories, and so Potluck, I think, is the first story. That's the one I'm going to try. On the 14th, I'm going to read the story that threw me off track. Not the story, but a story from the book that threw me off track last year. And it was at the same time because I think we were on a trip to visit Emma Grace around her birthday because she couldn't get away from school. And then I took this with me and I just sat around and read the whole book. So I'm going to go back and read the story called, well, I forgot, something about caterpillars. In a field of stray caterpillars. Now, this is collected stories, and if you haven't read them at all, I really think you should read the first story first. And then they are about the same main character, but they, they don't go in chronological order. They hop around through his life, so it's probably okay to read the caterpillar story after you read at least the first story. It, it kind of sets up a friendship that it, um, is in this other story. I'll, I'll talk about it more when we get to it. But anyway, if you have not read Night of the Living Res, by all means, put this video on pause and go order it right now because it is so good. Okay, moving on to this, the middle of the month, September 15th. We're going to read the first story, Blood Child, in this collection by Octavia Butler. It is kind of long, so I'm going to set aside some ample time to read that and enjoy it that day, a science fiction story. And I recently bought this. It was in my haul video the other day. Um, so I'm excited to add some science fiction. Although I guess the Forster's story also was science fiction. But I love Octavia Butler. So coming in on September 15th. September 16th is ah, the anthology again. Uh, the Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin. This is probably the shortest story in the lineup, so I thought I'd stick it in after what I think is the longest story in the lineup. And so that is a really short story around the turn of the 20th century. I don't know the exact date. I'll have to check. But famous shorty, shorty, short story. Something new to me that was recommended by Jim from Jim's Books Reading and Stuff and it is uh, a story from this collection by Ali Smith called Public Library. And all of the stories have to do with libraries. So that is right up my alley. And I have not read Ali Smith at all. I know some people absolutely love her novels. Haven't read a one. But I'm going to read the, the story mostly randomly picked called The Human Claim from the collection Public Library. And then on the 18th. 
One of my favorite short story authors is Raymond Carver. And I'm going to read the title story, Where I'm Calling From, from this collection. I haven't read this particular story in quite a number of years. Now, I will probably get sidetracked and read some of the other stories as well. Uh, the story for September 19th, I have a request at the library. I, I requested, the story is There Will Come Soft Rains by Ray Bradbury. I wanted to include a story by Bradbury. I recently read The Pedestrian and I was really struck by it and realized I had not read a lot of Bradbury, at least not in a long time. And so I checked out this huge anthology and it didn't have this story in it that I specifically wanted to read. So I have requested another collection and it will be here by the time I need to read it on the 19th. On the 20th, an older book from the, I guess from the 80s, is a story by Lee Smith from the collection Me and My Baby View the Eclipse, and the story is Desire on Domino Island. At the time that this book uh, came out, I, I think this came out when I was a graduate student, or 1990, I was finishing my uh, English master's degree, and Lee Smith was a visiting professor at the uh, university that I was attending. It was very exciting, and she was such a fun person. I'll talk more about it when we get to her story. September 21st is another author that I've been meaning to read for a while, Danielle Evans, and this collection is called The Office of Historical Corrections. We're going to read the story, uh, or at least I'm going to read the story, um, Happily Ever After. I don't, is it the first story? Yeah. If I don't know what to do with the book, I'm just reading the first story, and I figure that should give me, that should at least give me an idea of the style and whether, although I will say a lot of times when I've read an entire collection, I end up thinking that the first story was not the best one and wondered why they put it there in the beginning, but I'm still taking that risk. If I don't know any better, I'm beginning at the beginning. If I haven't received any particular recommendation. All right, the next one is in, I think it's in all those old anthologies and it's The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Love that story. Last Train to Dorksville, I have two editions of Literature and the Writing Process and Charlotte Perkins Gilman's in both of them, but one of them, it's all marked up with my notes from, I don't know, from the 80s or 90s or I don't know when, but so it depends on whether I want to see what I had to say or if I want to ignore my previous life and read the clean one. I have two options. Now, I knew I was going to need those again. You might remember a recent one of my um, Time Warp Tuesday videos where I look at some books I read and I find things that I completely forgot that I read, even though I've written like two pages of notes about them. And one of them was Moral Disorder by Margaret Atwood. Why do I remember all the novels I've read by her, but not the short stories? But I have it on record that I have read the stories. First I did a video where I said, why do I have this book and I've never read it? And then I found out I had read it and, and I don't remember it. So I am just, I'm a hot mess. So I need to read one of these stories. And it, what did I pick? The Bad News by Margaret Atwood. It's probably the first story. Let's see if it can make a lasting impression this time. Then on the 24th, we're gonna read a story from If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey. I bought this last year. Um, I think just, I read a good review of it somewhere and I bought it on thrift books. I thought I was getting this great deal, but they sold me a um, an ARC, and, which they shouldn't have done. But I did read it and I really liked it. Now it's on the book or long list. I liked it, I did not love it. I did think it was a strong collection. And since it is now on the book or list and I have it, I thought, well, I should at least read one of the stories that has stayed in my mind again. So I'll be reading Independent Living by Jonathan Escoffrey on September 24th. Then out of one of these old anthologies, I'm going to pull up A Rose for Emily by William Faulkner. Yes, I'm going to read something by William Faulkner. Not just say I'm doing it, but really going to do it. Didn't read As I Lay Dying for the library book club meeting. But I, I know that I liked the story Arose for Emily. Maybe it's the only thing I like by Faulkner, but that's, that's what I'm going to read. Guess what? I have volume one and two of this enormous anthology, 
and I'm sure I you know at the Faulkner's in there somewhere, and so is Sonny's Blues by James Baldwin, which is what I'm going to read on the 26th, and also, um, no, that's coming up on the 28th. There, okay, so Sonny's Blues is on the 26th. I read Giovanni's Room earlier this year, and if you are looking for an excellent short novel for Shorty September, I strongly recommend Giovanni's Room. It was so good. But, and I want to read more James Baldwin. So I found Sonny's Blues in one of these books, and I'm going to read it. Whew, okay, I had to take a break there. The books were like starting to cave in on me because they are everywhere. All right, so where are we? We are on the 27th. I found this book at the library in the new section, and it's called Small Odysseys. Selected Shorts presents 35 new stories. And Selected Shorts is, a, is on, oh, isn't it on NPR? Um, it's a, it's a literary radio program. I think I've heard it on NPR, but writers come on and share a short story. And I found a story by Elizabeth Strout that I, that is new and I haven't read it because this book is published, was published in 2022. So, and there was Elizabeth hiding in there. So I have added that to, uh, the schedule for September 27th. On the 28th, we got to go back into the behemoth. I don't know if it's in section one or two, but I'm going to read An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge by Ambrose Bierce. I probably read this back in high school or college, but my memory about the story has to do with a film that I saw as a child. And I will talk about that when the time for this story comes around. It's the Decameron Project again with a story by Victor Laval. This is how this whole thing started. I wanted to see if there was a short story by Victor Laval, because he's one of the authors that I have been, oh, I read Lone Women uh, maybe a month or so ago, and I thought, oh, I want to read some more of his work. Does he have short stories? And that's how I found this book to begin with. And then when I picked it up and I saw all the other authors that were in it, I it was like I found a pot of gold. So the story for, from Victor Laval is called Recognition. Last but not least, on September 30th, another one of my favorite authors, Dan Sean, and the story is called Bees, and it is in this anthology, Pose Children, The New Horror, an anthology edited by Peter Straub. And I thought this would be fun to read at the end because I might want to keep this around and read some of the other stories in October because they look kind of spooky and I see that it has um, some authors that I am familiar with in here Neil Gaiman, Joe Hill, Stephen King, Peter Straub um, I don't know who else but I thought I better investigate so that's it 30 stories in 30 days you can let me know what you think if you feel like you might join in and try to read some of these with me I'll be making reminders and little videos along the way in September and also a separate uh, September TBR about the other things I'm going to read as well. So I hope this sounds fun to you. I'm very excited and I'll be back to talk to you again on Friday. See you then. Happy reading.